Special edition of PFTPM, we continue our series with general managers, and I'm delighted to be joined today by the outgoing general manager of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He is Kevin Colbert. Kevin, welcome back. Thank you for doing it. Congratulations on the tremendous career. And really, we appreciate you taking some time to talk to us on your literally way out the door. Thanks, Mike. Really appreciate the opportunity to talk about, uh, talk about our draft class. Before we get to your draft class, I was blown away when I was doing some research over the weekend. And every once in a while, I actually engage in some research. The fact that Kevin Colbert was the head baseball coach at Robert Morris in 1981 and Ohio Wesleyan in 1984. How did that come to be? You know what? I mean, I was an average college baseball player after being an even more average high school football and baseball player. And you know, I was at Robert Morris. I was a graduate assistant basketball coach that had played baseball. The, uh, the baseball coach uh, took another position, and I, I just happened to be there and filled in uh, for that season. When I went to Ohio Wesleyan, I was a running back coach for the football team and an assistant baseball coach. And then the head baseball coach, who was actually my brother, he took another job at Cornell University, and that opened that up uh, in that season as the head baseball coach. And then, you know, I got into, got into the football world full-time with a scouting position with Blesto. What made that decision happen for you? Because you did have the foot in basketball. And at Robert Morris in the early 80s, that was the time frame when every once in a while they'd pop into the NCAA tournament, I believe. And you've got the baseball experience. What was it that drew you to football? You know, you're correct on the Robert Morris. I mean, we had recruited some guys and helped them get into their first NCAA tournament. And then, you know, baseball was actually the sport I was best at. But football was something that we kind of grew up with in, in the Pittsburgh area. I had a lot of family members uh, that were in the, in the profession. And I just felt that uh, my long-term best goals would be, our best uh, career path would be in football rather than the other two sports. And, you know, I chose, I, I was fortunate enough that my high school football coach, Ron Hughes, helped me get into Blesto and, of course, Jack Butler and then with the Dolphins and then the Lions and then, of course, back ending up with the Steelers. So it worked out, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't an easy choice all the time. We just felt it was the best career path for us. You mentioned recruiting for Robert Morris. And if I recall correctly from the article that Jerry Dulac wrote recently, that's how Kevin Colbert found Mrs. Colbert. That's true. It's a crazy um, story. But, you know, in the recruiting world, you spend a lot of time interacting with families. And uh, Forrest Grant, who was one of the point guard, who was the point guard on that on that first NCAA team. I spent a lot of time recruiting him, got to know his family very well. And his sister, Tina, was uh, worked with my wife at a grocery store. And she introduced me to my wife and my wife, Janice. And from there, you know, we're happily been married for 40 years that's awesome it's just great and you never know you never know which way the dominoes are going to fall and where you're going to be led and how things are going to happen but that's a great part of your overall journey now when you came back to pittsburgh after a decade with the lions did you have any idea that this was it 22 years later you'd be retiring as a member of the steelers organization absolutely not uh, i was very fortunate to be considered for this position, you know, originally it was called Director of Football Operations and we switched the title. Uh, I forget how many years back the job hasn't changed over that time period, just the title. Uh, but never did I think um, I'd be looking back 22 years later. And, you know, I, I don't know how it happened. I'm, I'm happy that it did. And there's a lot of things you can reflect upon, but certainly not. I'm not expecting 22 years in that first year. I was just trying to help help the organization, help Coach Cower um, get on the winning track, which we were able to do. How do you celebrate your final draft once the dust settles? What did you do to, to just basically take a victory lap for yourself? Really nothing. I mean, it might sound boring, but, you know, sat around and talked about the, the draft picks with the scouts um, just talked about a few clerical things that we had to handle what was coming up uh, for them in the future for myself and I just went home and just had a nice night at home with my wife and I, again 
no celebrations yet. I mean, you know, you'll, you'll celebrate a class or a career once this class, you know, matures and we see what we did. There's no reason to celebrate. We're happy with who we got, but until they help the team win, there's no reasons to celebrate. Now, you've scouted and drafted quarterbacks since Ben Roethlisberger was the 11th overall pick in 2004. I assume that this year was a much more in-depth and thorough scouting of quarterbacks than you had been involved in since drafting Roethlisberger. No doubt. I mean, every year, I mean, we scout every position at every you know level um, just so we do a thorough evaluation and stack the players accordingly. Uh, this year, we knew it would be Ben's last season from his indications to us. So we went about it differently. Uh, we mapped out more live scouting for that position. You have to see them play live. And uh, the scouts, myself included, collectively, on average, we saw each of those quarterbacks played live uh, in a game at least three times uh, between us. And, of course, the film the workouts, the pro days, the senior bowl, uh, we treated everybody the same throughout the whole process, but we were more in detail with it because we anticipating wanting to take one. There was plenty of confusion and differing opinions about which way the Steelers would be leaning if a quarterback or all of them, as the case may be, were available at number 20, Kenny Pickett, Malik Willis, others. What was it that ultimately drew you to Kenny Pickett? You know, ultimately, I mean, and I've said this, this was a this was a better class. And I think people um, maybe anticipate And the way it played out. Some of those guys got drafted a little later than we expected for sure. But I, I think it was a really good class. And, and again, we went through the process and put each one of these guys through the same exact steps. Again, not trying to take Kenny for granted because he's a next door neighbor and maybe we know him better. But we did the same thing with him but you just came away with a comfort level very early on that he's the most prepared uh, coming out. And, you know, he's coming from a pro system and we've watched him grow from a, you know, a sophomore into a, that senior year where he helped them help Pitt win a, win the Atlantic coast conference. Uh, so you saw that up close and personal. And in doing that, we never anticipated that he would have been, available to us but obviously when we pick Kenny we valued him above the others and again that's not to take anything away from those young men because we really came away impressed with that group not only physically but their their maturity level their families um, the interaction we had with that group was pretty special the hand size narrative for Kenny Pickett has been a thing and rightfully so it's an objective measurement and his hands are smaller than other quarterbacks hands what would you say to put the minds at ease of fans who are thinking, oh, when it gets cold and windy and wet, he's going to be fumbling the football over and over again at Heinz Field? Yeah, you know, honestly, I never paid attention to that. I, I, I talked about, um, I forget which game, I believe it was the Clemson game. You know, other, other personnel people were attending and some asked me about it. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe, that, maybe that's something, but I never paid attention to it. And, you know, we look at the results. Um, we watch Kenny play in our environment. Um, you know, albeit Pitt, Pitt didn't play games as late into a year as, as he'll have to do here, but it is, it is Pittsburgh. It's hot and humid in the summer and it's cold and rainy and snowy or whatever in the winter. But we're confident uh, that Kenny can do that. And I, I think the proof is just in the pudding. Can he throw the football? Absolutely. Did he have an excessive fumble rate? No, he didn't. Uh, so there's things that, again, we just judge it on how he played. And we, we get all the information and we'll, we'll factor it in and in the discussion point. But ultimately, it comes down to how the young man plays. On your watch, the Steelers have had three occasions where there's been a significant trade up in round one. Troy Polamalu, Antonio Holmes and Mo, more recently, Devin Bush. How close did you come? to making a move up instead of waiting for it to fall that you got the guy you wanted at 20? Yeah, again, we didn't think Kenny would make it to 20 under any circumstance. So once he started to get close, we were like, wait a minute, this, this is happening. Uh, let's talk and you know make some calls, which we did. And we always will do that if anticipating a player that we like, maybe not making it to us. We did it last year with Najee. Um, but we never struck any deals with anybody. And it was just a matter of, okay, 
maybe we'll do this, but you, you know, it'll cost you this. And then you always weigh, okay, what, what are we giving up by doing this? Or does it make sense to wait it out? In the last two years, we were able to wait it out and, and get the players we wanted. What's that feeling as you're waiting for the picks to pop in as you get closer and closer to 20? You got one more to go, two more to go, however many more to go. How are you feeling as it's happening? You know, you you, um, you learn just to accept it for what it is and, and how it's going to unfold. Um, you learn that there's not a lot you can't can do except make some calls and maybe have some decisions to make. And then you just wait. And um, we had mapped it out again we had 20 guys that we were comfortable in taking. So we know we're going to get one of those 20, but again, Kenny wasn't one that we thought would make it when he did. It was great. When you heard a name other than Kenny Pickett at 19, what was your reaction? Put it in. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't wait, did, any hesitation. Didn't you get the memo? The league wants you to wait. You're not uh, supposed to put it in right away. I hate that. And I, I understand it's a big show and the whole bit. And I, I don't like it, but that doesn't matter if I like it or not. Um, but there's absolutely no hesitation. And of course, we were ecstatic at that point and it, it worked out for us. One of the great things the Steelers have developed in recent years, and we've talked about this in the past as it relates to receivers, the ability to find receivers in every round, mid rounds, late rounds, any round of the draft. And Chris Sims and I were kicking this around earlier in the week. And since I have the ability to ask you, I'm going to ask you how much of what the Steelers look for in a receiver is just institutional secret formula. This is what we do. We don't tell anybody else what it is, but this is what we look for. And we know we look for this. We find this guy has this attribute. He's more likely to be good. This is what we want. How much of that is a formula that you guys have developed versus just case by case, person by person, scouting each receiver? I wish we could say there was a secret sauce involved, but there really isn't. I mean, we, again, we scout every position as, as best we can. We have criteria as we look for in a given in a given position, but I can't say it's a secret sauce. And not to take anything away from the great receivers we've had here in Pittsburgh, but part of their greatness was they they had the ability to play with a hall of fame quarterback and i don't want to minimize their contributions to maybe the hall of fame quarterback's career as well but there's really no secret sauce uh we look for young talented guys that you know they can they can get open uh they can catch a ball and maybe do something after a catch but you know, in, in, in the draft in the two we did, we drafted two complete opposites. One's a 6'3", one's just 5'8", um, but they're both fast, and we think they're both going to be good receivers. But until they get out there and prove it, um, we'll see. I mean, we've drafted, you know, we've drafted some receivers that haven't worked out, too. So it's not like every time we've taken a receiver, it's worked to our advantage. But we're confident and hopeful that these two can. How much of drafting two receivers this year, Kevin, is a product of the reality that the receiver market for veterans is going haywire and you've got a couple of guys who are moving toward contract number two and Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool and some tough decisions may need to be made? Yeah, no doubt. And But I mean, it was more reflective on the reality that we lost some receivers in free agency and it was just us trying to manage our cap as best we could and make decisions based on what we knew we had to work with. And sometimes in making those decisions, you understand that um, you understand what the replacement crop might look like. And again, as we were making those decisions in free agency, we were pretty confident that this would again be another strong receiver group, which we thought it was. And again, hopefully both George and Calvin can replace the guys we lost. The drafting of Connor Hayward gives you four sets of brothers on the roster. Is that coincidence or is there something to what you're looking for and you know the brother and you kind of like having that connection there in the locker room? How does that come to be? Because it's one thing to have one or two. You guys have four of them now. Yeah, I think that's pretty unique. When we had three, it was kind of unique. And Coach stated it best. It's not that we go into it looking for a brother. Um, and I don't want to take anything away from Connor just because he was Cam's brother. But when you have the comfort of knowing um, somebody that's come from that that family or, or that talent pool, uh, it, it is it's a little easier to judge who they might be as they join your team. So 
as you mentioned, we got four sets. We probably know them a little better than maybe someone from outside of that group. But it, we don't go into it saying we have to take this guy because of that you know, relationship to another player. Before I let you go, you told us at the Scouting Combine that you were open to remaining with the team in a different role. Jerry Dulac's article mentions that it's likely that you'll stay in a reduced capacity. Any final decisions on whether or not you will still be part of the Steelers organization? No, we've left it open-ended throughout the whole process. And that's, you know, Art Rooney, Coach Tomlin, myself, uh, whoever Art decides to hire, um, we'll, we'll make those decisions at that point. And again, as I've said, if I can help and not hinder, then maybe. Uh, nobody wants to lock into anything other than, you know, maybe um, helping whoever Art decides that he will hire and, you know, hoping to continue and try to find some more success for the Steel organization. As you said the other day, you helped add to that room, that trophy room. And I know the goal is to add more to the six that are in there. Congratulations on everything you've accomplished with the Steelers. And here's hoping that you do stick around and continue to be part of the organization for their sake. I think they would benefit from having Kevin right. Colbert still part of the team. Thanks as always for some of your time. And we look forward to talking to you again. All right, Mike, you take care. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.